Hey guys, welcome to Local Hack Day. So I'm Oliver Belanger. I graduated from Fordham in May, and I'm here to talk to you about ideation. So first, we have to think about what an idea is, and an idea is a basic unit of thought that can be used to communicate or to do something, an actionable thought, hopefully. Um, and we're going to break up ideas into two categories to start. We have instantaneous ideas, and these ideas are ideas that hit you in the moment. They hit you like a brick. Uh, they're eureka moments. They're light bulbs above your head, which would be great if there was a light bulb above my head right now, but there isn't. Um, and they always seem brilliant. They generally seem very brilliant in the moment, and then you think about them for a little while and you realize they're not, they're not that great. But if you do have an instantaneous idea, uh, definitely write it down, because having a list of those can be uh, really helpful sometimes. So the other type of idea, the other category, is generated ideas. And we're going to focus on those because, well, you're here. <laughs> so generated ideas are about perse perseverance, not about brilliance. Um, they're about grinding and about thinking things through um, and asking the right questions. They're not about being very smart. They're not about being brilliant, having insight. They're not about anything special. There's Anyone can come up with a generated idea that's good because they're about uh, asking a lot of questions and the right ones. So there's a lot of techniques that can be used to make, get an idea, to generate an idea. And uh, the classical one or the one that's most well known um, is something called brainstorming, which is something you've probably heard of um, at this point. Uh, it's a pretty commonly used phrase. Um, it's also a documented method of uh, thinking and, and talking and discussing ideas, uh, which you can look up on Wikipedia or on Google or wherever, um, Bing if you prefer. Um, and uh, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what I like to use, what I like to think about, um, which is something I like to call distillation uh, as a technique. And the whole idea behind this is taking kind of a large soup of possibilities and possible ideas and distilling them into like a small vial of that's like one good idea. Um, and it's a process that takes a little bit of time. So when you're thinking of an idea, the important part is to think about why you're trying to come up with an idea. Um, especially in this context, you're, there's a reason for it. So you have to look at your situation. You have to look at what you have, um, why you want the idea, what you need, and the constraints that prevent you from doing particular things. So the first um, thing to think about is your resources. Uh, this can be your skills, your knowledge, uh, likes, dislikes, personality, what have you. They're just things that you currently have and that can be used in some way, shape, or form. Another component is the goal. Um, this is, you can think of the goal state or what you want, um, and that depends. Uh, for, prog for example, if you're coming up with an idea to solve a particular problem, then the goal is to solve the problem. Um, the next component is constraint, and this is things that eliminate large swaths of possible ideas. Um, the best way to think about that is, for example, well, a hackathon, uh, and this is going to transition into our the context, thinking of these things in the context of hackathons. But for example, in hackathons, the context or the constraint is your time limit. That's a huge one, right? You only have 24 hours in some cases. Uh, for local hack day, you have 12 um, to come up with, thump, with something, right? Um, that short time span eliminates a lot of possible ideas, so it reduces the range of possibility to a much smaller range which in, sounds unfortunate and sounds limiting, but actually in a lot of ways can be really liberating because it eliminates the amount of things you have to think about. So in the hackathon context, what are these things, right? Um, resources, for example, in a hackathon context is going to be what your team has available. Um, so what are the skills of each member of your team? What does each member of your team know? What does 
what motivates each member of your team. What does everyone care about on your team? Um, those are going to be your resources, the things that you have, the things that you can use. Um, when you're thinking about resources, it's also uh, nice to not uh, pigeonhole them into one particular thing, right? So, for example, this pen um, is a pen, and you can use it to write things. But at the same time, it's also a cylindrical object with a pointy end. And if you think of it as just a pen, then you can only think of one use or function for it, which would be to write with. But if you think of it as a cylindrical uh, object with a pointy end, you can think of many other uses for it uh, much easier. This is because of something called object, object fixedness, which is a principle of psychology where people tend to fixate objects on their primary uses as opposed to what they possibly could be used for. Then, in the hackathon context, you have to think about what your goals are, right? So why are you coming up with an idea at this hackathon? Do you want to win? Do you want to learn something new? Do you want to build something cool? Do you want to build something you'll have a lot of fun building? Um, do you want to just try a new like piece of hardware? Do you want to try hardware for the first time at all? Figure out what your goal is with your idea. Um, and then make sure that the whole team has the same goal because that's going to be really important. Um, that's a huge friction point uh, as your ideas develop and as your team moves forward. This is a huge friction point if people have the different goals in mind for everything. The last part is your constraints. And as we spoke earlier, the constraints in hackathons, generally the biggest one is time. Um, at Local Hack Day, you have 12 hours, but there's other constraints as well. You don't have, if you're doing a hardware hack, which probably most of you aren't, but if you are, you don't have unlimited uh, transistors. You don't have unlimited pieces of hardware. If you're building software, uh, you don't have unlimited server space, not that you're going to run out of server hours or anything like that. Um, so that's in the hackathon context, and these are important things to remember when you're uh, thinking about ideas. So now for the actual ideation step, for the step of actually thinking about ideas, you have to generally pick a starting point, um, and this is why it's a distillation process. You pick a starting point, and then you ask yourself questions about that starting point. Um, and there's a lot of different good starting points, right? Uh, a good one is a topic you really care about um, is a good starting point because generally you have a good knowledge of it um, and you have a lot of care about it and you're well versed in it so you can think of different, um, you have a better understanding of it and you can think of different ways to move within it. Another one is complaints that you have. Complaints are a great starting point because they're pretty, pretty flagrant, right? Um, for example, like your commute or whatever, um, or the subway map or something. You look at that and you think there's got to be a better way to do this, and that's a good starting point for something because it lets you, uh, it's, it's a problem that nags you that you can work on uh, easily. And then the, another good starting point is just stuff that sounds fun to work with, right? Um, oh, like a Tessel, for example. Maybe you're just interested in that and you just want to work with that. So you now you have this starting point that is, I have a Tessel. What can I do with it? So you want to start with a starting point. The next steps is asking yourself questions. And they vary depending on different starting points. But let's go with um, complaints. And so the first one to ask, for example, for a complaint is, why does it annoy you, right? Why does this particular complaint annoy you? Um, what would you what would, could you do to fix it? What could be done to fix it? So in the sense of like reducing a commute, right? Um, and this, no, this is not. Mm. In the sense of like making food at hackathons, for example, faster. Um, it's annoying because you sit there in line waiting for your food, but at the same time, what can you do to fix it? Well, you could have a better way to disperse the food, right? Okay, so that's a way to start thinking. Um, how do you align that with your goal is another aspect. So like when you're thinking, you now have a complaint or a starting point. You thought about why it annoys you. You have thought about ideas of how to fix it. Then you align those ideas of how to fix it with um, your goal 
uh, so what you want out of this event, out of the hackathon in this particular case, right? Uh, and then you try to take that filtering step. And then the next one is, how do you make it reasonable? Um, how do you make it reasonable within the constraints that are allowed, right? So if you're making, if you have a software idea, you still have to make it doable in 12 hours. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So that was a lot of theory. Um, I'm going to call my friend Carl, and we're going to do this. What, what's the topic you care about? Uh, travel. Travel? Yeah. Okay. I like going to different places, adventuring and stuff. Cool. And um, what's, uh, what prevents you from adventuring in New York City? Uh, working. That's working, one, one of the yeah. Big things. Commuting to go home because I live in New Jersey. Right. So that's a lot of time taken away. So I like to be able to do things in a small enough time, but be able to see as much as possible. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's really cool. Um, so what what prevents you from like you're? I, it sounds like you're looking for like pocket adventures, like like a twenty minute adventure, like a thirty minute adventure, right? That's yeah. kind of like sounds what sounds like what you want. Um, what prevents you from like doing that now? Uh, well, being that I'm not a native New Yorker, I don't know where the things are that I should be going to see. Okay. Because, like, everybody always goes to, like, Statue of Liberty or the Empire State Building, all those usual places, but, like, I don't enjoy going to the usual places all the time. I like going to, like, discover things that people don't normally see off the beaten track. Okay, cool. So, that sounds like, um, what's preventing you from having these... 20, 30 minute adventures is a lack of information. Yeah. Cool, cool. So um, what, what can you, how would you normally go about um, getting that kind of information? So my go-tos are usually like four square or like swarm, right? Cause like yeah. swarm, you can see like where your friends have checked in. You'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, like they checked in there. They thought it was a really cool place or like, on Ford Square, it shows you like a list of like 40 different places in the immediate area of like, and their different ratings and stuff. So they might be interesting. Cool, cool, cool. And so, uh, so it sounds like uh, you're using these services that are sourcing information from your friends, kind of, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you ever just like ask your friends for like, oh, I'm gonna be in this area. Is it like, is there anything interesting and cool or? Uh, I guess not really, just because I don't really know how much they've actually, like, explored, explored. the area. Yeah. Cool. So, what about, like, um, a service that, like, I don't know, you drop a pin somewhere, and you, yeah, drop a pin somewhere, and then, like, push it to Facebook or something, and then you tag people that you think would know, have some information about that area and they can just like um, either tag places or reckon or write a comment or something mm -hmm. uh, something like that a uh, web service like that yeah that'd be really cool right maybe something that pulls in like your swarm data or something right. too totally so then like your friends could be like oh i was here i can definitely tell you that this place was awesome right because one of the things with that is like you forget all the time that like had I been there? Haven't I been there? Oh, that's that place. Yeah. That's a so-and-so location. You don't, like, remember yeah. the name or something. Kind of like a, like a places I visited a swarm interface on overlay on top of like a Google Maps or something, right? Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool, actually. Um, and now, see, one of the things, like, we transition kind of away from, like, the 20-minute adventure to more of a, like, oh, how do I, like, figure out Things that my friends have liked or enjoyed um, near me, not necessarily near me, but like on a geographical visual, in a visual way, right? And so in this case, we kind of distilled it away from our starting point to um, this new point. And now we're investigating this. Um, and this is kind of like the whole process is that you have your starting point and you talk back and forth between you and your teammates. And eventually you get to somewhere that's completely different from where you started. Um, and you decide, is this a good idea? Can we make this better? And you either move forward or you decide that's enough and you go f and you move forward. So uh, right now we're at this kind of like swarm square overlay on top of the Google Maps kind of system, right? Um, do you think, how feasible would you think that is 
in like a hackathon, let's say local hack day? I mean, if you have the right information that you know the thing that you're trying to get to, then it's pretty easy knowing like what APIs you're trying to hit for all the information that you need, all the ways that you're gonna like design your interface, it's like pretty doesn't have to be that fancy, but it can also be done very well in a very minimal manner. Yeah. So it seems like if you kind of take out belt and whistles and all the, the shiny things, it seems kind of like um, it's pretty feasible for, for like a 12 hour event, yeah. um, depending on the particular team doing that, right? Um, so that seems like a pretty good idea. Seems like a pretty le legitimate hackathon idea. Sounds like fun. Cool. So. Coming up with ideas is just about perseverance and cycling through and throwing out a hundred to get one good one and uh, then executing. Uh, an important thing to remember with ideas is that there's a first step. Uh, what crosses the finish line is execution. So don't get too hung up if your idea isn't everything you ever wanted it to be because as you're working on it, there's a good chance you'll also kind of find something more interesting. Um, as long as your team members all want the same thing out of the event, out of the hackathon, all have the same goal, then you should be finding an idea no problem.